hard to this. Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know if I can, ex I can like let well, some of you stay on this call. Sweet pickles, you guys. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Um, just kidding. So welcome to our hormone harmony event. We are, we're off. We're going to get started here. I'm so excited about this. Um, this call we've been doing these info educate, kind of like educational classes, educational sessions are short and sweet. Um, mm -hmm. but our goal with them is to, uh, just to offer value because this journey, especially as this journey as women on our hormone health path and our healing and our health as is uncharted. Um, there's no handbook for it. There is, um, it is confusing. It is overwhelming. It can feel defeating. And uh, collectively in our community and in our company, we have learned so much and are continuing to learn so much. And we want to I really think knowledge is power, especially in our health journey. Um, it was around this time last year that I, I, I realized I was struggling. The struggles that I was having in my health journey were not struggles um, that I was dealing with alone. That I thought I thought they were struggling with alone. I had spent ten years really being healthy, um, sh you know, shifting my lifestyle habits, or working out, eating well, um, and then. I hit 40 and then a pandemic happened and loss and trauma and a divorce and so much stuff in my health deteriorated almost overnight to the point where I was, I fainted, I was fainting. Um, I would wake, stand up and almost hit the floor. I'd be so dizzy. I wouldn't really be able to get out of bed in the morning. I never felt rested. I had went from being a high, high achieving, high performing person to not being able to remember um, anything. Brain fog was ruling my life. And I was feeling really, um, really alone in that and really, really defeated and scared that something was really wrong. Um, I was asking for blood tests at the doctor. I was trying to find other doctors. And luckily I came across a really great a couple of years ago, a functional medicine doctor who really has a mind body Approach. We talked about mental health. We talked about stress. We talked about um, nutrition. We started really di diving into my into my hormones. Um, and I'm definitely like a. I would if there's a book, I want to read it because I want to learn it and I want to be um, competent and, and confident in in my own body and what I'm going through. Um, and I had to really. It, I, it was like an uphill battle to get answers. And to find solutions because I felt like even once I moved away from Bend and my functional medicine doctor moved to Vermont, I really felt like I was having to fight my doctor, my, my medical system, like the people that are supposed to help me. I had to argue and fight and demand and get feisty. I think there was like a flag on my account when I would call be like, watch out for this lady, because like they would just straight up say no or try to give me medicine to mask symptoms when I was really trying to get to the root of it. So ultimately that led me to continuing to look for solutions and dig for this root cause idea. And, and ultimately led me to meeting Jenny Swisher, who was um, another health coach in our, in our ecosystem and talking about hormones, talking about um, perimenopause, talking about understanding our body's cycle and how to support it and work with it versus against it and how to be our own health advocate. And so I went through her course um, about, about, you know, about all of this. And one of the most simple, but transformative pieces um, is really shaping the call tonight that we wanted to offer. And it was this idea that she shared about um, that I think she got from her functional medicine doctor. So we're just sharing information um, about the idea of, of our hormone system, our endocrine system being like a four-legged chair. And if you think of like a four-legged chair or just any chair or something with, you know, a stool with four legs and you were to saw off um, one leg of that, so it wasn't, there weren't equal lengths, what you've got is an imbalanced, wonky, wobbly system, a wobbly chair. And so when we take that, and that's not that's not productive, right? That's not the kind of thing, that's not what a chair is designed to do. So when we take that metaphor and we put it on our endocrine system, and each of those legs represents um, four main pillars of our endocrine system, because our hormones are literally 
deciding there are computers of they are impacting every cell, every function, every organ, every enzyme and gland in our body. Um, but those four legs are, are representing our four primary functions. So what we might think of when we think of hormones, um, which is our sex hormones, which I think a lot of people are like, when we talk hormone health, that's where, that's where our conversation, our mind starts and ends, right? Our sex hormones are the progesterone and estrogen and testosterone. They're the things that regulate our reproduction, our fertility, our bone health. Um, but, and that's one leg, it's a really important leg. Um, our insulin is another leg of that chair. And that's our, the, the, the master regulator of our blood sugar levels. So that's where those that's produced in by our pancreas and it controls our blood sugar. It, it controls the glucose in our bloodstream, our thyroid. So that also can like, we'll talk about in a minute, what each of these kind of the imbalance in these areas kind of manifest into illness and disease and what that might look like. Um, but the third, a third leg is the thyroid. Um, that's in our neck. It's, um, it's a really important, <laughs> um, uh, gland and hormone component of our hormones. It controls metabolism. It decides how our body's going to use energy, um, and controls our vital functions like our heart, our body temperature, our digestion. And then the one that was really impacting me is our, my cortisol. So our cortisol is, um, kind of our, built-in alarm system, right? That is our, uh, produced by our adrenal glands. Um, and it helps our body handle stress. It supports our immune function, our metabolism. Um, and it can serve as our fight or flight, right? Our, and our, we go back to those like primeval, you know, caveman days, or even just anytime we're in a place of stress or danger, our sympathetic nervous system works in tangent with that, with, with that cortisol and it, and it surges to protect us. It, it keeps us alive. And so raise your hand. If you have held high levels of stress in your life often, or stressful things have happened often in the last few years, there have been not even higher levels of stress than normal. Right. Um, I think Stress is often, you know, busy as I always to say, like sometimes we used to wear like busy as a badge of honor and like stress. I think sometimes we wear it as a badge of honor, but really it was the thing that was making me so ill because it, what happens is that our, and, and again, I'm giving a really high level. I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor and I'm still just learning on this journey of learning as our Tina, our friend, our Tina shared today. Um, and just sharing this for, but what happens is our body will prioritize that staying alive, right? It'll give, it'll make sure it's prioritizing and giving us the cortisol and that fight or flight response that we need to stay alive. And in order to do so, it will underproduce things like estrogen, right? It'll, it'll say, well, we don't need to worry about um, a period right now or having a baby right now because we are in a life threatening situation because our, our fight, our fight or flight, our cortisol is so high. And that's where that imbalance happens. So when, whether it's because of medication or because of trauma or sickness, or because of the cortisol, we have, um, our, it's all interwoven. And a lot of times what happens is once, once one is imbalanced, it becomes, it affects all of the other legs or another leg. And then it, and then it's like a domino effect. And so our, I share that as like the preface for tonight, because it's such an imp important framework to understand what we're wanting to teach and share in terms of root cause and prevention and just overall how to support our bodies if if that makes if that makes sense because it is all connected and it is something that while we might not be able to prevent certain things they might be genetic but we can give ourselves a fighting chance or at least support our body in the path to rebalancing um i know I didn't say all that perfectly, but hopefully that like gave you a little bit of glimpse of maybe what's going on in our bodies. Cause I feel like once I learned that, I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. Why my adrenals completely have flattened out. And I have an adrenal dysfunction now because my at this high level of cortisol, um, these high levels of cortisol for so, so long. And now, um, which was triggered, like filling feeding into other areas of my hormones as well. So Jenny's going to dig into next kind of like going through each of those key hormone areas and like, what are some of the common illnesses and ailments and struggles that we often are all experiencing or diagnosed with 
and what that might look like and mean. Perfect. Well, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, the, the four-legged chair analogy is one of my favorites. It's something that I was taught by uh, a, a, a compounding pharmacist that was very knowledgeable in the hormone hormone space. My name is Jenny Swisher. I'll, I'll share my story after this, but I, I'm, I'm super excited to um, to talk to you more about this because I just geek out over hormone health. And so when people are like, when people want to hear about it, I'm like, oh, this is like my Star Wars, you know, like you're a Star Wars person. This is my Star Wars. So, um, so I want to talk more just about, like she said, the different ailments and different issues that can come about from an imbalance in that four-legged chair. So like Jamie said, if one leg of the chair, if I sawed off one leg, it causes the whole chair to be wobbly. And in my opinion, as an integrative health practitioner, I can tell you that this is why hormones are so complicated, right? Because you can have symptoms of one thing, let's say thyroid, but really the weakest leg of your chair might be something unrelated. It could be cortisol, right? So women's hormones get to be very complicated. And I, unfortunately, I can tell you this confidently, it's even confusing to a lot of doctors and a lot of experts too, right? Like it really takes a specialty, someone who really wants to dig into this, who can really understand it. This is why, in my opinion, a lot of women are being met with, I don't know, you're normal, right? If you've got a heartbeat, you're probably fine. Like, because no one really knows how to take these different symptoms and to look at this imbalanced wobbly chair and to know where it's all coming from. There are people who do know that. That's a whole other topic for another day. But I want to talk to you guys about what could be at play. And I really want to put a focus, especially on perimenopause, because that's something that no matter what, we're all going to go through um, at some point as women. So so let's just start off with, you know, like Jamie said, we've got the four legs of the chair, but there is a kind of a hierarchy to the chair, which is what she was alluding to, right? Cortisol is really at the top of the chair. It is queen. Um, reason being exactly like she said, your body's going to prioritize survival over reproduction. It's going to, it's going to say, Hey, we got to keep this girl alive before it's ever going to reproduce. Right. And so, um, a lot of times women are dealing with different things. You can be dealing with, let's say in my case, I dealt with endometriosis. Um, so I had a lot of sex hormone imbalances that were sort of my, the weak leg of my chair, especially in my, my twenties into thirties. Um, other women might see repercussions in other ways. They might see things like, uh, PCOS, which by the way, did you know that PCOS, while it affects sex hormones, actually typically has a root cause in blood sugar stability. Um, so blood sugar tends to be at the root of 80% of cases of PCOS. So you can kind of start to see how these different legs of the chair really matter, right? And so regulating our blood sugar really matters. Um, paying attention to stress in our life and in our environment really matters. And that's something that I want to touch on here tonight is a lot of times we think about the things um, you know, as women, especially, I feel like diet culture has kind of imposed this idea of we've got to work out a certain way or follow a certain type of diet in order to be healthy. Right. And so a lot of women are like, what's the best workout to do? And, and what's the, what are, what are the best things to eat? Or should I do intermittent fasting or whatever? Right. Like these are the questions I get on a daily basis. And the answer to that is really, I'm actually more interested in what you're putting in on and around your body than I am the app exercises that you're doing after work. So we really want to take a look at what is our environment like? Because the things that we're living in on a day-to-day -day basis, the bottle you're drinking your water out of, right, impacts your endocrine system. So this is what we call, you know, some people say environmental toxins, estrogenic um, compounds. Um, I'm looking around in my room right now and I'm thinking about the fact that you know, the curtains on my wall um, have estrogens in them. They have different environmental toxins in them that I'm living in every single day, right? And I don't want to be like the crazy girl that's trying to like scare you or anything, but that's just, that's just the world that we're living in. And when we can actually say, okay, let's take control of what we can control, right? Like, let me just handle what's within my control. And what's within my control is I can move my body every day. I can eat as healthy as I can, as far as whole food ingredients go and I can eliminate the toxins that are in my immediate environment. I can change out the things that are affecting me with, you know, through my skin, uh, the things that I'm that I'm around on a daily basis. So, um, so let's talk more about the different issues. Like I said, I mean, you know, Jamie kind of alluded to sex hormone imbalances can be anywhere from like endometriosis, painful periods, irregular periods, irregular cycles, um, thyroid conditions. Goodness, we could have a whole call just on thyroid. I mean, the thyroid is the thermostat of the body. That's the way I'd like to think of it. Um, but the thyroid regulates so much, right? And we're actually starting to see in recent research where the thyroid is very tied into trauma, trauma and traumatic experiences. And um, obviously stress plays a role in that as well. So again, this is all kind of intermixed. 
uh, cortisol we've already touched on. And then blood sugar, I, I feel like I touched on that too, but it's not, blood sugar is not just, by the way, it's not just diabetes, right? It's not just someone who has been classified as a diabetic. It is I would say 90% of the women on this call, myself included, blood sugar regulation is very hard and it is at the root of a lot of hormone imbalance issues. So if you're someone who is um, grabbing a granola bar in the morning or you're skipping breakfast in the morning or you're doing fast, fasted workouts, those types of things, you're kind of putting out your body on a little bit of a blood sugar roller coaster, which in turn is doing what? it's actually increasing your stress response. So that's where I want to, you know, I know, I know I don't have a lot of time, but with cortisol and blood sugar, especially, right. I said to you before, cortisol is queen. It is this, the hierarchy of this entire thing. It actually plays this really cool little tango with blood sugar, right? So anytime that we put our body in a restricted state of eating, which can be through intermittent fasting. It can be through fasted workouts. It can be through just not eating enough under fueling, as I like to say, what we call LEA, low energy availability in the nutrition space. If you're not eating enough, especially for your activity level, you're putting your body into this blood sugar deficiency, which is then causing cortisol to rise. So you're actually doing a disservice to your cortisol, which then we start to see ramifications where why is my menstrual cycle all messed up all of a sudden? Or why do I all of a sudden have a thyroid disease or an autoimmune disease? That This is what I mean. So if nothing else, I hope you take away the fact that everything is interconnected, that everything comes back to stress on the body, and that if we can really control what we can control with the stress that's on our body, we're winning, right? And so where does that start? That starts with the things that we put in on and around our bodies. Um, and you know, Jamie, I don't know if you want me to just talk more specifically about that, but I just think, you know, taking, taking an inventory of what are the small things that I can swap out in my life, things like, you know, facial care, um, skin care, body lotions, right? Like we think about, I hate to throw bath and body works under the bus, but I always like to say when women come to me and they say, what's the best workout I should do, or, you know, what, how should I eat or whatever? I'm like, what are you putting on your body? You know, like if you're a country apple fan, all of us were at some point, like you're lathering yourself in so many different chemicals, um, that that is not, it's not going to help you get anywhere. In fact, it's going to help your body hold on to the fat. It's going to help your body really enter that stress state that we've already talked about. So eliminating what's not good for you and what's not serving you and replacing that with the swaps that you need. So it's kind of equal to if someone were to say, I really want to start eating healthy. What, what's the first step? The first step is not necessarily buying the whole foods, right? A lot of us have been there where we, we go buy the fruits and vegetables and put them in our fridge, but what happens? We still go for the Doritos or whatever that's in the cabinet. So the first step in eating healthy is to eliminate the things that are not making us healthy. That's the same case here when it comes to our skincare, when it comes to the things that we're cleaning our house with, um, which Hugh and Grace, of course, offers. So that's, that's the perfect segue into perimenopause. And this will be my final point here before we keep going with other stuff. Um, perimenopause is one of my favorite topics to talk about, because like I said before, every woman experiences it at some point. And so first, let me just define it for you. Um, people like to say like, oh, I've been in menopause for five years or whatever. I'm like, no, you haven't. Um, menopause is actually just a day in time. You have reached menopause when you have had no period, no menstrual cycle for 12 months. So let's say that your last period was on June 1st of last year. This year on June 1st, congratulations, you're now in menopause. So menopause is a moment in time, but there's about an eight to 10 year stretch or period of time leading it up to menopause known as perimenopause. This is very under talked about, much like when most of us were teenagers, we didn't talk about periods, right? You're like passing tampons to your friend under the desk, right? Like we don't talk about it as women. Same thing with perimenopause, although I, it's on the rise, people are starting to talk about it because women are starting to say normal is not optimal. I don't feel, I don't feel right. My check engine lights flashing. What happened when I turned 40? Like, that's the question I get. Like I turned 40 and everything. I don't know what happened. Um, perimenopause, that's what's happening. And so What's happening in perimenopause, and I'll keep this, I'm, I'm trying to keep it short. I'm a talker, so I apologize. Um, perimenopause is 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 not actually too related to your estrogen. Everybody seems to think like, oh, it's, it's my estrogen. Estrogen is the last thing to drop before your period ends. So estrogen dr drops off and tapers really, you know, really within the last year or two before you hit menopause. But that other eight years where you might be dealing with things like anxiety, trouble sleeping, brain fog, migraine headaches, 
maybe not, but some, some do, right? Many women do. If you start experiencing those things, those are actually more related to your progesterone. And progesterone actually will start to decline first. So progesterone is your female fertility hormone, for lack of better terms. It's what keeps the pregnancy. It arises in the second half of your cycle after ovulation each and every month. And it is our calming feel-good hormone. So progesterone starts to go like, so estrogen stays here, but progesterone starts to decline. And this gap between the two is the problem. It is the problem. That gap between the two is known as estrogen dominance. And that is what most women are dealing with during perimenopause. So to blow your mind, I'm going to ask you this question. What happens if your body is in a chronically stressed state, not necessarily from like relationship stress or work stress, what happens if it's sitting in your office with the, the, the toxic curtains, right. And you're drinking from the plastic bottles and you've got, you're using the back body works. Like what happens when you're, you're in that stressful environment? Your body, well, your, your cortisol, which we've already established is queen, can actually steal from your progesterone. So when cortisol needs more oomph, when it needs more fuel, it will reach first and foremost, it will reach to those sex hormones. It will start to pull that progesterone and say, mm, I need this now because I need to help this girl survive. So when you're in perimenopause and the progesterone is on, on the decline anyway, I like to say it's your ovaries waving along farewell. Like it's been real, it's been fun, but we're done here. Um, as that's happening, right, your court, if you're in a stress state or you're in an environment of stress, your progesterone is going to be even more taxed, right? Because now it's being pulled for stress as well. This, my friends, is the definition of why is it that everything I'm doing now is what I did in my twenties and thirties, but it's no longer working. This is the answer because your progesterone is on the decline. You're in a stressful state and, or a stressful environment. And your body is doing what? It's trying to survive. And so when it's trying to survive, <clears throat> what is it going to do? It's going to hold on to the belly fat. It's going to um, regulate itself as best way, as best it knows how. It's going to try to stabilize that chair from the sawed off legs, right? So hopefully that brought it full circle. And I'm sorry I went a little bit over, but I, I just want to make that connection because I want you guys to understand that like, I can give you all the tips in the world. I mean, I'm launching a, a cycle syncing fitness program next month. Like fitness is my jam. Nutrition is my jam. But at the end of the day, step one of this entire process is eliminating what's not serving you. And it's making the swaps that you're living in so that you're, you're giving your body that break and you're giving it that truly that stress relief that it needs. So do you want me to go straight into just, I didn't even share. I feel like I should have shared my story first. So hi everyone. <laughs> Let's go backwards. Um, so anyways, okay, so I'll go straight into my story and then we can hand it over because I know I've, I've over talked, but so my name is Jenny. I'm an integrative health practitioner, certified personal trainer and nutritionist, been with you and Grace since December. Um, super excited to join Jamie and, and this amazing team and this company because I, as I told last night in a different call, like I was not about to uh, join forces with a company that just said they were hormone health, right? Like I think it is, I know it's trending. It's the number one talked about topic on Instagram uh, right now, but I don't care what's being talked about. It's it, To me, it's being talked about not because it's a trend, but because it's a need. Because women are finally saying, like I said before, normal is not optimal and I'm, I'm sick and tired of feeling this way. Um, and so for me, it was about aligning with a brand that was truly in it for the right reasons to, to be associated and aligned with a brand that I know I could trust for everything. So the fact that there's multiple product verticals here, that there's, um, you know, skincare, you know, we can help you make those swaps in your skincare. We can help you make those swaps with your household care. We can help you make better nutritional choices, starting with hydration and detoxification, which is, is king with, with hormone health. Um, that was important to me. So my, my background is, uh, is really just in health and wellness for the last decade or so. Um, but I got there, I always say very, unfortunately, I was not somebody who ever wanted to be in sort of like the medical world or, or the health world. In fact, my degree was in journalism and English writing. I thought I would be a book in the book publishing world, uh, working in a corporate environment, but I started struggling with chronic migraines that were hormonally triggered. Uh, which I still suffer with to this day. Um, but I started dealing with hormonal migraines and then was kind of turned on to this world of functional medicine through that journey. So I went through the gamut of modern medicine surgeries and Botox and medications and all the things for the migraines. Um, but eventually landed finally in the office of a functional wellness practitioner uh, who started to look at things from a through a different lens, through a root cause lens. 
Um, and we started to really investigate my sex hormones. She seemed to think that that was the weakest leg of my chair. And it was at the time. And through, through remedying my migraines, uh, I entered this at this point, my late twenties and, uh, my husband and I were like, well, you know, we want to start having kids. So this is something we need to start diving into. So we started going down the rabbit hole of trying for kids wound up in infertility clinics. Um, I was diagnosed with endometriosis, had multiple surgeries for endometriosis. And, uh, so hormone health has just sort of followed me <laughs> through different health ailments from chronic migraines to infertility, endometriosis, uh, and beyond. And so what I've learned though, is no one out there was necessarily going to like, to, to teach me what I needed to know or to, to, to help me advocate for myself. That was something that I had to do on my own. I had to really say, you know, I am my own best doctor and it's not okay to have a migraine three weeks of the month. It's not okay for me to, um, to struggle with infertility and just be at the, you know, the saving grace of the infertility doctor. Right. So, um, I say this for love for any woman that's been out there that has suffered, uh, you know, with, with a, uh, a journey and in infertility, endometriosis, painful periods, I, all the things I totally feel for you. Unfortunately, there are too many of us, um, too many of us out there suffering. And I, th I really do think that it's companies like Hugh and Grace and products like this that are going to bring the awareness to women everywhere um, to make these simple changes, because this is, this is really, truly where it starts. Um, I have a seven-year-old daughter who's, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but she's she pulls my tomboy card on a daily basis. Um, she's very, very into skincare and it's the rage right now. Like my seven-year-old is like, literally like, can we go to Sephora? And I'm like, we're never going to Sephora. Like, no. <laughs> so, um, so kids are into this now. Like, I mean, it's a thing to get into, um, skincare, right? Let's teach them the right way to do it. Let's teach them the way to put things on our bodies, uh, and around us that are going to help us be healthier and not take away from that. So anyways, that's who I am. That's a little bit about all the things perimenopause and, um, and whatnot, but I'll hand it over to who's next, Jamie, you, I'll hand it back to you, my friend. Uh, well, I'm going to hand it over to Danielle, but, um, if you're still, so I would love to know in the chat, like what, what has stuck out to you? If you've had any light bulb moments so far, um, you know, every, we all have a, we all have come to this call to this company to this season of our life because life has handed us a challenge right has hand has kind of pushed us to start being our own advocate to asking questions to challenging the idea that normal is okay right when we are when we know how good we we are designed to feel um and then and some of this is environmental some of this is preventative some of this is genetic um, but it's all, what do we do with it now that we're here? And I, like Jenny spoke to the fact that we're at Hugh and Grace, like we really want to teach you and empower you to make those simple swaps and, and look, start looking at and investigating what goes in on and around your body. Um, uh, and Danielle's going to take that, this call to that next level and share a little bit of her story because it's, um, very personal and scary and, you know, literally life or death. And mm -hmm. I think part of a big wake up call, right. And, um, taking a deeper look and what's at, what's at risk when we don't, um, but also helping us all understand like, where, what does this look like? Where do we start? Because it can feel like the idea isn't just to scare us. It's to empower us to take action. So Danielle, go ahead and take it away. Hey everyone. I'm Danielle McKean. Um, I've been married for 15 years. I have four beautiful children. Um, I've been in the fitness and health space for over 11 years. And now I say kind of like Jenny did, the hormone space kind of followed me because of my cancer diagnosis. Um, at the end of 22, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. I literally had it all over my body, um, in my liver, in my bones, a spot on my skull, my ribs. I mean, I literally was was a death sentence, you know, like conventional oncology basically gave me X amount of time to live and don't let anyone put a timeline on your life. Cause I'm still here over a year later and I'm thriving. Um, I went to an alternative clinic in Arizona cause I am totally against all things conventional. Um, I always have been. And so it made me, you know, this made me look deeper into alternative even more. 
Um, but I knew I wanted to approach it with a holistic mindset and with doctors that uh, treat really tough cancers. So um, I found a place in Scottsdale, they're naturopathic oncologists, and they really focus on the root cause. Um, the root cause standpoint, the terrain, the environment that this was created in, um, it scared us to death. <laughs> Uh, but I have a lot of faith and I knew deep down that I was going to come out on top um, and that God had me. Um, and so, let's see, I got back from treatment in September and my scans were completely clear. Praise God. Like no sign evidence of anything. I actually have a follow-up scan tomorrow. So I'm a little nervous, but again, I've come this far, you know, um, so anyways, we did lots of testing. My blood work was sent to India. They basically do like a liquid biopsy and they test your cancer cells on every nutraceutical off-label drug. Uh, chemo agent is very targeted treatment. It's not like in the conventional world, you are a triple positive breast cancer. You're getting this treatment because you're in this box. So this was very targeted. Um, they tested me for all the root cause, like environmental tests I did, um, Dutch hormone tests, um, every blood genetic testing you could think of, I was tested for. Um, I'm, I could talk all day about my story and all the things I did and all that, but I just want to go into, um, you know, how to prevent this, right? Because I've learned a lot. W what can you do now to prevent a hormonal uh, cancer or a hormonal health issue like I was just faced with and still facing. You know, I do like a million remedies every day, um, which is part of my protocol. Take a million supplements. I do, I do so many things. But one thing I've learned that really stood out to me during all of those tests that I did, which they found high levels of mold. My mold levels were off the charts. Um, my glyphosate, uh, uh, numbers were off the charts. So let me just take you back real quick. I was a hairdresser for over 10 years. I was swimming, breathing, living in chemicals every single day. So, you know, we try to pinpoint like, how does this happen? It's like a lot of things because there was, you know, estrogen that drove this, progesterone drove this, HER2 positive drove this, environmental toxins drove this, like a lot of things being a stage four. Um, but two mutations came up on my testing and that was the MTHFR. Um, those mutations were pretty eye-opening. I have both of them. So 50% of the population has at least one. And it basically means you don't methylate, you don't detox well. So what do you do if you have this mutation, you don't know about it. You just have to focus on opening your drainage pathways and detoxing on a daily basis. And so I'll give you some examples. Um, you could do that with nutrition. You could do that with supplementation and you could do that with your lifestyle. Um, I took it to a next level and I do a lot of things like the sauna because I have both of those mutations. I do sauna every day for an hour, red light therapy, castor oil packs, coffee enemas. Like I am off the deep end with a lot of things that I do, but for the average person just wanting to be in prevention mode, um, let's focus on diet. That would be the first thing, like having a diet really high in fiber, uh, fruits and vegetables, juicing, um, avoiding alcohol, processed foods, sugars. Those are all bad for your hormones. Um, this is going to help your body naturally detox all of those environmental toxins out. Um, just, you know, um, toxic hormones, I would say, I think it's xenoestrogens. Um, which can set you up for estrogen dominance. So like just your diet alone can really help you detox. And I know it seems like so simple, but it's true, right? Getting rid of caffeine first thing in the morning and a pre-workout on an empty stomach. I did that for 11 years with my last company. And looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like just with everything that I've learned, I just like shake my head like, oh, I wish I would have known what I now know, you know, but you can't go back. You can only move forward. And so um, you could have your coffee, but just more in a supportive way after a good breakfast. Um, I am still against pre-workouts now that I know better. Um, that can also mess up your hormones starting your day with, you know, cortisol levels going up, 
uh, with caffeine, first thing on an empty stomach, uh, Jenny kind of touched on that, um, swapping out a bad habit for a good one, you know, like instead of your coffee and your pre-workout, try the hydrate detox, you know, like everybody's dehydrated. I learned another thing that showed up in my blood work is I was very, very dehydrated. They wanted me to have the LMT and I just was already so crazy in my head there. I would not have it because the sodium content was over a thousand milligrams. And I mean, I went there with like no sugar, no oil, no salt is going in this body. Um, and I, I live a little bit more now, but um, I, I wish I would have had our hydrate and detox then, which it literally like hydrates and detoxes on a daily basis. Um, I read a book called Radical Remission. Um, I have to share this real quick because this book was life-changing for me. It was basically a ton of stage four uh, cancer patients. Um, the author of this book interviewed all of these people and there's something they all had in common. They just simply ate more fruits and vegetables and they completely cleaned up their life. Like completely, they did everything opposite different. They didn't do any conventional treatment whatsoever. And so that was like, mind-blowing to me that changing your diet, getting rid of all the toxins in your life can make a profound impact on your health, your hormones, detoxing, and your future health, your family, your kids, you know, and I'm trying to teach all this stuff to my girls now, which they're in their teenager years and having their time of the month and getting acne. And it's like, I'm trying to keep their, their hormones balanced because that's like my worst fear of this happening to them, you know, but Having an alkaline diet, it's going to help push out those environmental toxins, which are those um, xenoestrogens um, that become toxic in your body and disrupt your hormones. So like all of those chemicals I was breathing in for so many years as a hairdresser, probably destroyed my body in some way or the other, you know, um, along with so many other things. Uh, but a, a diet high in fiber is going to not only help your gut health, um, it's going to help your hormones. And when you have bad gut health, that affects everything, you know? Um, second thing I want to touch on real quick is supplements. Um, I was never into supplements, uh, before this cancer journey. I just simply drank a shake, uh, thought I was eating clean, working out like crazy, but I've learned there's a lot of power in supplements in uh, good quality supplements that are third-party tested with a COA. I won't touch any supplements unless they have that third-party testing. I love that our company has that. Uh, that was really important to me. So like milk thistle is good for detoxing your liver. Um, probiotics are really important for your gut. Um, glutathione is really important to binding to those heavy metals. So like after my scan tomorrow, I'm going to be drinking our hydrate and detox and getting all that junk out of me. Um, but there's lots of supplements to block cancer's feeding pathway. I've taken so many courses for, uh, cancer. Um, and it's just, it, it's mind blowing all the supplements out there that can literally stop the feeding pathways that cancer eats off of like fatty acids, glucose, and glutamine. Um, and also the right supplements can be supportive for your hormones as well. Like extra fiber and, uh, dim and, um, broccoli sprouts, things like that. Uh, last thing I want to touch on is lifestyle. So I had to completely change my life. Everything I put in on around me, it's like, you know, that saying insanity, expecting different results. And you keep doing the same thing. I had to literally stop everything I was doing and I had to do everything completely different to get the results that I had after a stage four diagnosis. I mean, all over me, it was completely traumatizing. I had to do everything different. Um, and I go to these cancer centers and it drives me crazy. Everyone's drinking soda and eating chips and um, so overweight. And it's just like, oh my gosh, it all matters. Everything matters, you know? So lifestyle, what can you do to change your lifestyle? You got to avoid um, environmental toxins. So the toxins you're breathing in, get an air purifier, you know, change up all the products that you're putting on you and around you. It truly, truly matters. Um, I know because I saw on paper what um, chemicals were in me and they were off the charts. So, and they, the doctors told me that everybody has this stuff in them, like mold and glyphosate to a certain extent, but obviously cancer patients have it 
to a whole new level. Um, so detoxing on a daily basis, that's why it's so critically important to do that. Um, smoking, that's horrible. I don't even have to say anything about that. Um, drinking alcohol can also disrupt your hormones and is, a, I think it's a carcinogen class one, I believe. So I gave up alcohol. I, I loved my nightly glass of wine. I totally gave it up. Um, and I don't miss it. I really don't miss it anymore. I feel so good. I sleep good. And I just, you know, you just don't miss it when you, you feel good and you're healing. Um, cleaning up your load from beauty products. Believe it or not, all beauty products have talk, so many toxins and chemicals in them. Replacing it with safe ones. Getting rid of cleaning products. Bleach, guys. Bleach is banned in Germany. My stepmother lives in Germany. And it's banned. So what does that say? Like, I don't know why the U.S. is so behind on this stuff. But getting rid of all your toxic cleaners and all those things. So doing all of these things, like I mentioned, is just going to support your body's natural detoxification process. Um, I had to change my life in all these areas and I'm still learning, still growing. Uh, but I love that our company is all about detox, repair and protect. And so that's, that's all I have for you. Well, I want to say that uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm so glad that you fought this and won and are winning and, um, are able to, I learn every time we talk and you and Jenny both, like I could just literally, I know uh, uh, several people said it in the chat too. Like I got to sit and listen to you guys for hours because I like learn so much, but I think that, um, just the fact that you're sharing all of this knowledge that you, you know, bought this with and it's such a degree it's such a gift to all of us to be able to uh I don't know I don't know anyone that doesn't know someone with cancer has fought cancer is fighting cancer or lost someone to cancer and um I think a lot of these illnesses we've talked about tonight are um just present I I mean put in the chat please you guys if you if any anything that any of the illnesses or ailments or struggles or disease that we have mentioned tonight is something that has touched your life personally or in your family, like, like which ones, because I think that it's pervasive. And I think that that's why we have to talk about this. And that's why the mission of Hugh and Grace, our company is so important because like Jenny said, like, I'm not, we're not here to, we're not partnering with the company that's just talking about hormone health. Like they're, we're actually creating these products that will make these shifts. Like we're not curative, but we're going to support your body and doing the work that needs to do to be healthy and to, and to be set up for success while also working with functional medicine doctors, if you're really sick and, and, you know, finding other products, like, you know, our catalog is growing, but you know, like it's opening my eyes, like, okay, what deodorant am I using? What laundry detergent am I using? Um, a, what tampons am I using? And like being able to share that outward and sharing with one another, right? Like, I think it just is the tip of the iceberg. So, um, so we're going to pivot and we have a guest tonight. Thank you, Danielle. Um, we have a, um, and well, if we have a minute, we're way over on time, but we're just going to keep going with it. If you guys are here, like this is so important. And I think the conversation is so important. Um, so if you have questions, put them in the chat and if, um, you know, if, if, if we, assuming we have time, we'll, we'll jump into that at the end, but we have a, uh, I wanted to invite Jamie Malia to, to kind of do a little mini interview with me tonight. She is a customer that's also now an advocate and, um, and, and her health journey ha led her here. Um, I think her health journey is, um, really reflective of what a lot of ours is in terms of the messages, you know, how, how our experience was is with diagnoses and medicines and at the doctor and stuff. So we'll keep this brief. And, but Jamie, thank you for being willing to come on tonight and share first, just tell us a little bit about your health journey, like what you, in your past, like the evolution of your diagnosis and your struggle and how you got here. So I, about 10 years ago, when my daughter was two, I was diagnosed with thyroid disease. Um, I couldn't lose weight. I was low energy, tired all the time. And, you know, I just over the years, just trying to find, you know, different things to help me. And I just was always a struggle, complete struggle. Um, then four years ago in 2019, um, the doctors found a, a large fibroid. 
in my uterus, like on the side of my uterus. So we were just watching it. They wanted me to have surgery. Um, COVID hit my fear. I was like fearful of surgery completely. So I just let it go. Um, back in November, I ended up having severe bleeding where I thought I was going to die. Um, scared the life out of me. Went to the doctor. They said I had to have a hysterectomy. Put me on the medication um, to stop the bleeding just so I could do my mom things. I had things with my daughter that were scheduled. So I um, took this medicine. My hair was coming out in clumps. Like I was losing hair. I was feeling terrible, gaining more weight. Come December, the end of December, I heard about Hue and Grace. And I started researching it. And a lot of their supplements, like the morning supplement, I was taking a lot of it individually. So something just was like, wow, let me really look into this company. I really need to change my hormones. I really need to fix this. I ended up having the hysterectomy on January 22nd, started with the supplements that came in like the next week, started taking the collagen, my hair started growing back, my body was feeling better, I had more energy, and now fast forward nine weeks, I'm back in work and I, I don't have to hit the snooze button, like I was literally hitting the snooze button, it's embarrassing, but I probably had 10 or 12 alarms set on my phone. So it was just, I have so much more energy. I have, you know, less brain fog. Um, my skin feels better. My nails are growing healthier. My hair is like, it grew probably like three inches since January. No kidding. Like it's just, it's, I have to use a lot of spray because I need right now to get hair, hair dye. <laughs> but um, I just overall feel so much better. And I feel like now that I'm learning even more about my hormones, I'm in a better place. Recently, um, I went through a lot of stress the last month. My mom, they said was they said she had cancer. Um, fast forward a month after this whole process, she went and had a hysterectomy, and there was no cancer. They said she she was in the one percent. But this whole month, I was continuing to take the hydrate, take the detox. It's like just gave me my routine in the morning and I was able to function in a, in a better space throughout all this stress and trauma um, about, you know, because they basically gave her 30 days to live. And then she went to having 30 days to having her entire life now. Um, she quit smoking. Like it's just a lot of good happened even through all this month of bad. So um, I don't know, I'm probably just like rambling, but it just, I feel Hugh and Grace gave me a lot in a short period of time. And I'm just so thankful that I have to just share. I have to share. I have so much to share. Oh, well, I, well, and I love that you shared. And I love something you said to me last night about your daughter. Do you want to speak to like kind of what your hopes are with this knowledge for her? Because I think that speaks to a lot of moms with of daughters. I do. I mean, she's so, she just, you know, our kids, our daughters like mimic us and she's 12. So they, they really follow us and they want to do what we want to do. And she's all about, you know, doing the skincare routine with me. Like she wants to be doing everything with me. So she follows the skincare routine with me. Um, I just, I don't want her to have the struggles that I've had, you know, and the fears I've had. So I really want, I want her to be able to understand hormones and learn. I just feel as women, and I've, I, I think over four years of not having anyone to talk to about any of my issues with bleeding, um, I just feel like we need to open up more. And I'm, I'm finding now with Hugh and Grace, I'm able to have a voice. I'm able to maybe help women that are maybe just starting out with a fibroid that are scared to have surgery you know, that want to learn more about their hormones and how to help their bodies. And I want my daughter to be able to also have that voice growing up, not and not wait till she's like 45 to have a voice. I love that. And I, I agree. I don't think I've talked about periods or poop or anything as much in my <laughs> entire life as I have in the last six months, but I'm so glad that you're here. And I just wanted to thank you for sharing with us. Um, I think that like there is just a perfect example of how this just knowledge can be empowering, right? And it can help us find the solutions that I know you had said, you know, like for a long time, the doctors would just 
say, well, we can fix this with more medicine. Let's just take more medicine. Let's take, how about this medicine? And that was, that was really similar to my journey too. And it's not that there's medicine has its place. That's not what I'm saying. But like, when we're really talking tonight about root cause, like medicine is going to mask that, right. And keep us from getting to that. Like, yeah. I feel like I was just, over, I've always been overlooked and not finding. And that's my, my goal now is just to find what's going to really heal me and not just mask the problem. Like every time I go back, I tell them like, I'm still exhausted. I'm still tired. I'm, you know, I still have brain fog. I can't get up in the morning. And it's always like, okay, let me just up your medicine. But I just need to find the right fit for my body to actually try to heal myself. And yeah. I feel like now I'm learning and, you know, I'm meeting so many different women and being educated and, you know, I could finally maybe find what, what will definitely help me. Well, I'm so glad that you didn't give up in asking and demanding for to feel better and asking the questions and finding the solutions and so just the beginning and I'm excited to see how much your hair grows in the next Thanks. Uh, <laughs> four months. Um, okay. So I don't know if there were some questions in the chat or Jenny or Danielle, did anything pop up while we were chatting and, or anything you want to add anything, any, if you have a question, feel free to unmute or put it in the chat. We have just a couple more minutes. We can round out the hour. Why not? I feel like I started it by talking. You told me five minutes and I was like, I'm just going to be real upfront. There ain't no way I'm going to talk for five minutes. Five minutes. I think I said, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I think these are important conversations. So we make the time for things that matter in this matter. So it's all good. I was like, I said yesterday, I'm like, there's no law that says we have to be 30 minutes. So this is a rule we made for ourselves. Um. Do you want to speak out loud? I know you put in the chat and, and Danielle touched on this a little bit, but like, Talk to us about hydration and detoxification. Lindsay would like you to talk about dehydration and detoxification and being king. Yeah. So, so I find that most people, um, you know, have water goals, right? Like we've all seen the, the gallon jug carrier at the gym and, and the measured measurable bottles where we're all trying to get our water in for the day. But if our body isn't, doesn't have enough of the minerals needed to help that water absorb properly and to be used by our organs, <laughs> by, by our muscle, um, then it's just, you're just peeing a lot. Uh, so hi proper hydration means that you're getting the right minerals. A lot of times that's magnesium, potassium, sea salt, which we can find in our hydrate and detox formulation, right? But as Danielle talked about, there's LMNT, which is a really popular um, hydration elixir you can get on Amazon and such. Unfortunately, it's really, really high in sodium. Um, that's not always very productive for, for people, especially if you're dealing with things like high blood pressure or, or other issues that could be at play for you. Um, there's also another formulation that's popular in grocery stores that's really known for high sugar. We really, we really don't want the high sugar. We really don't need the high sodium. So I like the Hydrate and Detox. It was probably my, it's probably my number one favorite product um, from Hue and Grace because it's just, it's just so simple and it really should be simple. Let's just give you the minerals you need so that your body is getting the hydration it needs. Um, and then the detoxification component, to my opinion, is just like an added bonus. Like not only is this a hydration elixir, but you're also getting the benefits of the pro and prebiotics to help with digestion. Um, and then the glutathione. So glutathione is known for uh, liver detoxification in particular. So we could have a whole call on liver uh, and liver support, but the liver essentially helps um, process excess estrogens, which estrogen obviously comes either from your ovaries and, and your body and your adrenal glands, or also from the curtains on your wall through environmental estrogens, right? And so if we're able to detoxify any excess estrogen, it's helping with things like the estrogen dominance that we talked about and such as well. So um, we want both. We want proper hydration but we also want to be able to detoxify the things that aren't serving us in our bodies, right? The toxins that are in our bodies. Sometimes that is excess estrogen. Sometimes it's just things that we're, we're bringing in that we we're not aware of. I mean, it can be heavy metals. It can be a lot of different things. So glutathione is really a powerhouse ingredient in that formulation. So I like the hydrate and detox because it's a twofer. You're getting the hydration and the detoxification all in one. And it's, you're not going to find that in any other products. Perfect. Okay, but now you've kind of given me an identity crisis because I've been saying it wrong. I've said glutathione, but now say it again, Glut glutath glutathione. You can say it either. I've heard it said both ways. Yeah, you can say it either way. It's potatoes, potato. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
I've been saying yeah. it wrong this whole time. Um, any other questions, you guys, or anything? You've got some amazing brains to pick right now. Um, if you're like, okay, I want to start exploring this. And um, I guess really fast. Well, first, if whoever invited you to this call would be love to partner with you in the next steps in, in this journey. So reach out to them. They'll reach out to you. Um, but if you guys were to pick one Hue and Grace product and one non-Hue and Grace lifestyle tip to start these people tonight on their journey, what would be your like, you kind of already touched on a little bit, but let's reiterate and end with that. Like what? Where, where would you guide them? And you can't repeat each other. Who wants to go first? Jenny? You're thinking. Dang it. Sure. Okay. It I mean, I would say, so I don't want to repeat anything I've already said. Um, I mean, my hope is, we, I feel like we touched on so much just in the last 50 minutes or whatever, or 55 minutes. I think, I think, um, you can't, let me say this. I'll say it this way. You can't exercise your way to hormone balance. Um, finding a functional medicine doctor is a step toward hormone health, but it is not necessarily, unfortunately that can be a journey in itself as well. So what really becomes the focus point for people, cause it can be overwhelming should be how can I become more hormone literate about my unique body? Because my body is individual and health is individual. Once you understand your body and its bio-individuality, Danielle talked about her MTHFR mutation, right? I have it too. I'm also COMT. Um, once you understand you, you can customize supplementation for you, right? You can, you can fill the gaps in your own health based on what you know about you. So self-advocating for yourself Keep it that simple. How can I learn more and become hormone literate about my body so that I can advocate for it in the way it needs? And how can I do what's within my control, which is making those simple swaps? I love it. Danielle, what do you have? Do you want to add anything? You're good, Jenny. <laughs> um, I think diet to me is the biggest thing. Like that's something we can control. We could do it right now. We could go to the grocery store. We need fiber. Like that is critically important for flushing out not only toxins, but xenoestrogens that build up from environmental toxins. And it just all affects our hormones. We want to repair our gut fiber. Most people today on a busy schedule, if they work, they may be getting a couple servings like all these cancer programs that I've done says you need 10 to 15, even 20 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I know like the carnivore diets and like ketogenic and all that will beg to differ. But if you really want to detox your body and you need to be flushing all of that bad junk out. And that's something we all could do right now is just eat more fiber. I love it. And I'll say, find a good community that's going to help you continue to feel your best and support you and not like, you know, and just help normalize this journey. And I think a lot of people are feel dismissed and overlooked, like Jamie said, or gaslit or um, just made to feel crazy. So find a new doctor if that's how you're feeling. Find a different community, a wellness community. You know, you're welcome here. And so just don't don't give up on yourself would be my um, it can feel like, okay, I guess this is, this is just how I'm supposed to feel. And it's not. So, um, this is just the beginning. Thank you guys all for joining us. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you, Jenny and Danielle, and all of you that make this my day bright every day in this community. And I hope to welcome a lot more of you here soon. And these are the conversations we're having all the time, just more in depth. This was a, a, a little, a moose bouche of, really some important stuff, but really a lot of the work starts on the other side. So have a great rest of your night and we'll talk soon. Bye. Thanks.